these are the 10 best songs, in my opinion, that Linkin Park ever made. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Let's find out right now. What's up, guys? Welcome to Local Band Smokeout. Smokeout. Any genre from anywhere in the entire world. I want to hear your music. All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another local band smoke out. I am your host, is higher than most BG, and I've actually never done anything like this before. I was trying to think of some new content to come up with, and I thought it'd be kind of cool to do my uh, my top ten favorite songs from a certain artist. Uh, so we're gonna start this off with Lincoln Park here. I have a list of my ten favorite songs. I'm sure no one will agree. And it's kind of subjective to be, you know, everyone has their own favorite songs. These are just my personal favorite songs. And um, yeah, because we can't play for copyright reasons, we actually can't really play the particular songs uh, that I'm about to name. But I'm just going to discuss why some of these are my favorites. And uh, I'm sure, again, that you guys will disagree. Uh, please consider clicking the subscribe button first and foremost so you never miss any of these. LocalBandSmugout.com if you ever need me to shoot something for you. Any genre is accepted. Linkin Park's Top 10. Here we go. Coming in at number 10. Number 10. So we're going to go 10 to 1. Number 10. Uh, this song in particular, when it came out, it's off of Minutes to Midnight. It's the very last song on Minutes to Midnight. It's called The Little Things Give You Away. And uh, it, it's it's such a powerful song the first time I heard it. It really, uh, I mean, Chester's always pouring his heart out in, in every song that, that he performed in. And uh, I believe this could be the first time Linkin Park ever actually had a solo. What? Which is crazy. Think about it. There was no solos in Hybrid Theory. There was no solos on Meteora. And it's something you don't even think of when you think of Linkin Park as guitar solos, but I'm pretty sure this was the first time that they had a full-on long solo. And it's a it's a six-minute song, which is something that they also had not done at the time. So coming in at number 10 is The Little Things Give You Away, again off of Minutes to Midnight. <coughs> Excuse me, coming in at number nine right here. It's going to be off of Reanimation. It's a Forgotten featuring Chally Tuna, The Alchemist, and uh, it's it's just such a cool, like when Reanimation first came out, it was, to me, it was so far ahead of its time. In fact, it came out on Super Audio CD, and I didn't even know what that was, but I bought it, and then I realized I couldn't play a Super Audio CD, so I figured out, I, I think that year, like PlayStation 2 or something came out, and it allowed play, this could may be incorrect, but a system came out and it allowed you to play Super Audio CDs on it. So I bought that system just so I can enjoy like the best quality version of reanimation of which to this day, even though Chester has passed, I still think Mike Shinoda should consider releasing a reanimation 2 uh, in the future. Anyway, that's my number nine. Number Eight for me is going to be Points of Authority, the original version off of Hybrid Theory. When Hybrid Theory came out, it completely revolutionized the game as far as new metal and, and new metal artists and the genre itself. Probably, I don't know, it probably sold like 13 or 14 million albums. But uh, that song in particular, which I think is track four on the album, is just so incredible. And it has like a unique almost like ding, ding, ding. like the the snare on it is it always reminded me of like a railroad like hitting like a railroad or something i don't know it has just really cool stutters stutters weren't even that hot and popular then and there's a lot of stutters and stuff going on um on that album that are kind of like tucked in hidden spots but they really show up on uh, on points of authority uh jumping back to minutes to midnight on my number seven Top 10 favorite Linkin Park songs. Number seven for me is going to be Given Up. Given Up, I believe, was the f opening song on Minutes to Midnight, if I recall. And uh, it was just such a powerful, angry, but such a cool way to start off that particular album for me. Um, 
And Chester's just going crazy screaming wise and it's just full of high energy. They had a brand new look with all the uh, the black wardrobe and leather and stuff on. And it was time for them to slightly get out of the new metal look with the baggy jeans. And and uh, I believe Rick Rubin did that album and he killed it. He got them to do stuff that they had never done before. And it totally worked. Fantastic, fantastic song and album leads us to number six. Number six for me is gonna be uh, off of Meteora, first time Meteora makes an appearance, and that would be Somewhere I Belong. Uh, I remember being in school, and uh, I was part of the LPU fan club, Lincoln Park Underground fan club, uh, which got me to meet the band at one point, opening for Metallica many, many years ago. And that was amazing, it was worth, it was worth being a member just for that alone. But um, yeah, Somewhere I Belong, which is the video where like it had like the weird like monster things like walking in the background. I remember getting like a, an exclusive video access before it came out on MTV. And uh, like the entire, I want to say I was in like fifth grade, I don't remember, third, fourth grade. I don't remember what grade I was in. But the whole, like I went to a private school at this time. Uh, all, all like 60 kids were like standing around me in computer class and we watched the video together and we were all just like, yes, yes, the songs, and we'd never heard the song yet. And we were all such big Linkin Park fans from Hybrid Theory. It had to have been like fourth or fifth grade, I'm thinking. But regardless, I, I played it probably 20, 30 times before the video came out, I think the next day. And, uh, just, wow, what, what a powerful, awesome song that was. So just to recap so far, little things that give you away. Forgotten, but it's the reanimation version. Points of authority, given up, somewhere I belong. This now takes us to the top five. And this is where it got really, really difficult for me. Really difficult for me. And again, by the end of this list, you guys will probably be like, what the f***? I can't agree with this list. There's so many songs he's missing. How do you only pick 10? Linkin Park has like a... 250 songs, if you especially if you include all the demos and Meteora stuff that just came out recently. They can only pick 10. Uh, so we, number five is going to be No More Sorrow, another song off of Minutes to Midnight. And I remember the first time I heard this, the opening guitar riff, which has the hmm, 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 the bow sound, which I guess Rick Rubin had told um, Brad to to try playing that riff with a with an actual violin bow instead of playing with a pick and it just created such a cool unique sound and then it just has like the marching drummer drummer marching sound to it and the drums are so ferocious when they when they come in it just grabs your attention and to me that's a song that was like very different than anything that they'd ever, they'd ever done in their entire catalog and still hadn't had done after that. So that one was also um, really special to me. Also, there's little to no Mike Shinoda on that particular song. I know he's playing guitar or piano or something, but I mean, uh, I mean vocally. Um, the, my fourth favorite is going to be a song called Leave Out All the Rest, also off of Minutes to Midnight, which when I had done this list after I was before I'd shot this, I was looking at my list and I was like, man, when I think of my favorite Linkin Park album, which is probably reanimation i don't have as many reanimation songs on this list as i do minutes to midnight so that's i thought that was interesting but leave out all the rest is just one of those songs where chester just just pours his heart out and he always did but this one in particular which is a radio pop rock hard rock vibe that I don't know. It just gets me emotional when I hear it and see the video for it. And that track always just gives me goosebumps. And one of my absolute favorites, number four right there. And now we do the top three. Okay. Okay. Top three is going to be uh, one step closer, but it's featuring Jonathan Davis. Of course, coming off of, uh, of reanimation. One step closer, I think... Uh, Paper Cut was the first song that came, and if I had to pick an 11th song, Paper Cut would have been number 11, by the way. I love that song, which I, I think Paper Cut was the first single that they ever released, and then with knowing that One Step Closer was going to be the big radio record, and it was. It totally was the big radio record for them, but um, the reanimation version is so unique and cool how Jonathan Davis adds the, and it's boring blood is poor like he added another element to the breakdown of the song that i think was 
slightly missing in the regular version, which, which you like, you'd never notice it unless you hear the reanimation version. But that album is just so sonically beautifully done. And I swear, I just, if I ever get a chance to interview Mike Shinoda, fingers crossed someday, it's one of my absolute bucket list holy grail interviews because I'm a diehard Linkin Park fan. Um, I would ask him, uh, if if he's ever considered or if we can ever assume that someday maybe we'll get a reanimation too. And uh, the cool thing is it could, because the first one is basically just hybrid theory and, and a couple extra demos like My December and, you know, thrown on there and some remixes. But essentially from Meteora to the, to the end of their catalog, like Hunting Party and One More Light, Thousand Suns, Leaving Things, all of those could be in, worked into reanimation too. It could be a 40 song, double disc. I don't know. People don't buy CDs anymore. I absolutely would. That is my number three right there. Then the top two. The top two. Now, this was so hard. This was so hard for me to figure out how do I pick my two favorite Linkin Park songs. And I tried to think long and hard about the songs that impacted me the most. Now, again, these, these are just my opinion of my favorite songs. I'm sure I encourage you guys to go in the comments and, and give me your 10. Go in order. Be 10 all the way to number one. Tell me what you agreed with, what you did not agree with. And by the end of this, you're going to be, I think, slightly furious at me. And I'll explain why when we get to the end. But number two is going to be off of Meteora. And that is Breaking the Habit. Breaking the Habit is just mind-bendingly amazing there is so much going on instrumentally i've watched a a making of the song and seeing mike shinoda have the entire orchestra at his fingertips and being able to arrange and i didn't know that he was that good of of uh, a songwriter and, and an arranger when it comes to the creating of the music not necessarily lyrically but just how the song is put together and having all the strings and then when you see the video and the video has like a anime cartoon kind of twist to it it was just so cool and unique that i had to put this at number two and of course knowing chester's struggles with with drugs and alcohol and ultimately some other things that i think led to his passing um this one in particular was him crying out for help and us not realizing at the time how much of a struggle he was having and that song always just really was emotional to me. So Breaking the Habit comes at number two. This leads us to number one. What is it going to be? Well, it's a song off of Hybrid Theory. And that song is By Myself. By Myself is my favorite Linkin Park song of all time. It always has been, always will be. I've probably played it 2,500 times in my life. It's, I, I don't know how to describe it, but it's just, it's just the perfect new metal Linkin Park song. It's the back and forth of Shinoda and Chester uh, hip hop wise going with, with all the screams, the energy I've seen it live a couple of times. Uh, it, it's so, so good. And in my opinion, that's the best song that Lincoln Park ever made. Um, at a certain point in their career, I'm sure they stopped playing it because they had so much material and they wanted to play all the new stuff. Um, but yeah, that's my top 10 right there by myself. Number one. Now, this is probably why you're pissed. Yes. I ignored four Linkin Park albums. I ignored them. I ignored A Thousand Suns, One More Light, The Hunting Party, and Living Things. All of those albums do have great songs on them. They do. But none of them contain, in my opinion, a song that could have broken this top 10. This is just my opinion of my top 10 favorite songs from one of my all-time favorite bands. So I'm sure you guys will disagree. But again, please comment below. Go in order. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. In order of what you would have put as your top 10 favorite Linkin Park songs. It's not easy. It's going to take you a minute to make that comment. I think it will. But um, if you guys enjoyed this, I, I had fun doing research for this and and uh, coming up with this list, which took me at least three or four days. And I scribbled stuff out, went back and forth on, on this one should be eight, and seven, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, I'm confident with my list right here, but you really can't go wrong as long as you enjoy Linkin Park's music and keep keep Chester's, um, you know, his his memory alive. And uh, the one thing I always regret is Linkin Park announced a, a Hollywood Bowl show 
post-mortem for, for Chester. And they had uh, people like Ollie Sykes and, and other members of other bands fly in and do vocals for them on like a one last time show. And I tried to get tickets for that. I tried as hard as I could and I did not get tickets. And it still bothers me to this day that I could not attend that one show. But uh, if you guys enjoyed this band, please consider clicking the subscribe button. Also comment below and let me know who I should do a top 10 for next. Again, these are all just based on my opinion of uh, everyone's list is going to be completely different. And that's the cool thing about music, man. If we all agreed that this band, everyone thinks this band is the best band in the world. Everyone thinks this is the best song in the world. Music would be boring. The matter of, of having an opinion is what makes music great is you can't like everything, but yet somebody else likes this band, even though you don't. That's what makes music beautiful. Um, put your music, let me do a couple sponsors real quick. Put your music into space. Bandruption.com has the power to put your music into the atmosphere and it's 100% free to sign up for them. Uh, if you'd like this show to grow and expand, me to be able to shoot more content on a regular basis, please consider checking out my Patreon. It looks like this at the end of the video. There's a link for it in the description of this reaction. Uh, or you can just go to patreon.com slash localbandbg. But it's uh, it would very much uh, mean a lot to me if you guys just checked it out. And finally, uh, if you're playing shows, especially here in the States, you got to have merch. And I highly recommend mymerchguy.com. Use code LBS420 for an excellent discount. In fact, that discount could save you hundreds of dollars. Other than that, though, guys, I am your host who's high the most BG saying cheers. Keep blazing and peace. I'll see you next time.